Uh, sir, we are live now. Please start. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this NPTEL organized session on the recent trends, emerging trends in process automation with a overview about DCS. Myself, Ananda Kumar, I'm working as additional chief manager in one of the thermal power station of Navy Lignite Corporation, NLC India Limited. NLC India Limited is basically a mining and power generating company, which comes under the administrative control of Ministry of Coal. Now we have expanded our power generating capacity and method through renewable energy also. Okay, friends, now let us get into the session. Whatever the products which you are using or handling, you can see you are getting it in very large quantity and numbers. And if you observe those products, any product, any industrial outcome, any product, even your car, mobile phones, laptops, the toothpaste, toothbrush, anything, if you observe it closely, you can find a precision, a quality is there. And you are getting it at a very low cost. Have you ever wondered, how is this possible? how the technology, how the industry had grown in producing such a large scale products. To know about it and to know how the industry, especially the automation technology is progressing, be with me for the next one hour. Since this session is more focused on students, I'll be first uh, touching up with the basics of uh, process, industrial automation, then we will gradually move to the distributed control systems and its architecture, then the challenges related to this and what are all the emerging trends which will be taking over the automation industry or it will be leading the automation industry to the next level, whether the industries are prepared to observe or imbibe the latest available digital technologies we will see in this session. At the end of the session, you'll be having a questionnaire. Uh, already link is provided. Please post your questions. We will discuss about uh, the questions. We will uh, elaborate. We will also see, especially for the students, how you can groom yourself as an automation engineer and what are all the job opportunities available in this field. Sir, is this slide visible? To start with, what is a industrial process or what is actually happening in the industries or what we call it as a process? See, anything which we convert or which we modify or change to get the desired output. We can call it as a process in simple terms. In industries, two major types of process are there. One is the manufacturing process in which mostly we convert the raw material to some finished goods or products. We call this as a manufacturing process. Say for example, your pen, your mobile phones, these things can be called as a manufacturing. You assemble then the production process where we use the resources to get the desired output. Say for example, we take uh, bauxite, we do mining, bauxite mining, 
we refine it to get alumina refinery then we use it in the smelter plant to get the aluminium later on it is converted to finished products like wires ingots and so on so so you can call this as a production process where you we use the resources to get the desired output if you see in this conversion process a series of reactions are involved a set of reactions are involved and there happens some physical chemical or electrical or even mechanical sometimes we move the resources or the products or the goods from one place to another process another place so this conversion happens these conversions are responsible in bringing the desired output that is the either as a good or as a product from the available raw material depending upon the type of process and the type of industry raw material used these reactions make happen either in a series one after another or parallelly at a time together at four three places then the finally it will be assembled together say for example the coffee making that is also a process we first boil the milk then we add a coffee powder and sugar we stir it three sub process are involved in the coffee making so this is a series one say for example the pen which we are using the cover the bottom portion and the refill these three are produced at a different places then assembled at another one so we can call it as a parallel process these are the different process now we will see depending upon this kind of conversions and the activities involved we categorize it as a batch process batch process means one after another continuous process like thermal power generation where once we start boiling the coal or lignite we continue to get the steam the steam is used in the turbines the prime mover to rotate the generator and electricity is generated if you see it is a continuous process we don't stop in between and sequencing process sequencing process is a process in which it happens one after another and ends overall you can see some pictures related to the thermal power generation process in which a resource the coal is used is transported to the thermal power plant for boiling once it is used for generating the steam that generated steam is used for rotating the generator in turn the we get the electricity so if you see this is a continuous process now we got some idea about what is a industrial process what are all the different type of process now let us get into how to automate this before getting into the details of the automation let us see some basics about what the automation itself is if you see when we say when we use the terminology automate it means it indicates that it is a pre programmed execution of the events and how the events are executed or a decision is taken which suppose i want to start a pump so i start the motor open the discharge valve open the suction valve these are the some sequences involved suppose uh, the pump develops the required flow then we can close the recirculation valve initially the recirculation valve is kept open to ensure minimum flow at the suction so if you see this this is a even driven some places say i give a command on command to a motor for starting i am waiting for the feedback to ensure that my motor is st had started or not i wait for certain du duration to declare that my command is executed properly so this we can call it as time driven if you see in these two events or the process mentioned the decision is taken either based on the event that is motor starting or the duration to declare that the motor is running or not so either it is event driven or time driven and the entire logic to automate any process is developed based on the protections and the interlock 
the interlocks are there to ensure that the process is stable the protections are there to ensure to safeguard the equipment and the personnel working near to it so based on these things only the the design parameter about the process the need and the quantity of the final product and the protection and interlocks the logics are derived these logics are then converted to codes and executed via the controllers the automation controllers so this is what we call it as the automation the very purpose of automation is either to reduce minimize or make it nil the human intervention it is automation means it is with less or no manual intervention of handling the process this is what automation is and we execute this automation of any process using some hardware maybe the controller or modules or computers and the software that is the programming related to that this is all about the automation next let us see what are the different type of automation it means depending upon the process or the machinery involved and the quantum of the output required we can classify the automation first thing is fixed automation like you go to a coffee vending machine there you press the button you get the first the milk uh, powder mixed with the water it comes out then that uh, decaction comes out then you get the full coffee if you see it is a repetitive process wherever the process is of repetitive in nature we call it as fixed automation there is no need for reprogramming programmable automation means the sequence of events which are to be executed to get the final product can be programmed or reprogrammed to an extent then comes the flexible automation in major process the quantity the configurations of the product need to be changed very often say the size or the raw material used quantity of the raw material used or the mixture this need to be changed in this case we select different configuration accordingly the program executed also varies and depending upon the need or the equipments ordered or the situations prevailing in that process the entire program the code can be modified to execute or to meet the need this is called flexible automation integrated automation is about uh, having so many automatic uh, sequence of event or controllers executed at various process then we coordinate or execute the overall uh, desired uh, outcome by coordinating all these subsystems that is called integrated automation so far we got some idea about what the automation is all about and the different types of automation now let us get into the various layers or levels by which we can automate a process the process can be automated at the very base level say for example i am uh, i want to maintain a level of any vessel say for example any drum there is a input coming and the output going i want to maintain the level at say for example 70% so here i can automate this particular one loop at the field level by using the sensors the level measurement sensor and some actuator say for example the control valve inlet control valve or outlet control valve this we can call it as the level 1 automation that is the field level where the physical actions and machine monitoring are automated and sensors and actuators are used for the same next the higher level we coordinate all these individual loops we coordinate all the individual equipments and we execute the series of reactions that is the process using the controllers this is the next level automation means the entire process is automated this uh, uh, automation is based on the data collected from the sensors here we use the controllers and there will be some interfaces for the operators 
to know about the status of the process then comes the supervisory see when we speak of a process the process may be a single one or for a single product or it may be a, the plant may be a integrated plant integrated plant in the sense say for example uh, initially i told about the aluminium sector where we have bauxite mines refineries and uh, smelter unit in uh, smelter unit we will be having the actually we generate a aluminium through electrolysis process so there we may be using the carbon blocks we get the finished product the aluminium is generated in the electrolysis part then it is transferred to the cast house for making the ingots or wire rods then it is uh, uh, the ingots are shifted to the finished product unit if you see here four five units are located inside a plant inside a industry so there all some the products from each part is interlinked so here comes the role of the supervisory automation where the scada and management information systems are used to enforce more control to get the overall product even in case of power generation we have the fuel handling system we have we have the water treatment plant we have main plant package in which we have boiler turbine generator then switch yard then water supply units are there so overall we want to get the final product for that to enforce further control over the in a supervisory manner over the individual units we go for this supervisory level of control then comes the plant level so gradually now we are going from the production related approach the process related approach to plant management related approach the product how to execute how to integrate the automated function how to schedule the production when this is automated we call it as level 4 automation then the enterprises planning this is about managing the entire organization which are related to process that is uh, inventory scheduling the maintenance of the equipment all these things when it is also automated we call it that entire that organization as highly automated or fully automated these are the levels of automation depending upon the type of industry oil and gas or uh, fertilizer plants chemical and fertilizer fertilizer plants pharmaceutical industries food and beverage industries cement industry steel industry steel and aluminum power generation depending upon the type of industry and the process involved and the organizational requirement for the level of automation the process is automated these are the various levels of automation a plant with the highest level of automation will be able to operate from through a single computer that is the, that plant is called the plant which achieved highest level of automation it helps in understanding the operation how the production is progressing how the company can be taken to the next level all these things will be or can be automated with some algorithms at the highest level we will see those things later next so far we saw what is a process what is automation what are all the different type of automation now let us get into process control system because when we say automation automation is about automating the equipment a machinery and automating the process itself or how to get the final product so the system which is involved in automating the process we call it as process control system already we saw in detail about different type of process so to know the to automate the process we first need to know what is the status of the process what is the status of the process parameters because already we saw process means it is converting raw material to final product in between series of or set of reactions are involved 
So the conversion will happen only at predefined physical, chemical, or electrical conditions only. To know or to achieve the predefined physical condition. Say, for example, even for boiling of water, the water starts boiling at 100 degrees atmospheric pressure. So the water to start boiling, the predefined physical condition has to be achieved. There comes the role of the sensors. The sensors plays in knowing the status of the process. Once these status are occurred from the through the sensor, it is fed to the controllers, the operation team, the monitoring team continuously monitors the process status to ensure the required product is achieved. If there is any deviation in the process, then the controller accordingly controls as per the automated program or the code executed. It gives commands to the process equipment so that the desired the conversion happens properly. So this is all about the process control system. First, let us see before going getting into the details of DCS, let, let us have some idea about what are the components involved in any process control system? Because when we speak of automation, all these components come into picture. First of all, the controllers. The controllers already we saw where the, the pre-programmed execution, the codes or the logics are entered. The interfaces, operator interface, operator workstation, human machine interface, whatever the terminology we use, they help in knowing the status of the process and giving the command. The communication network help in uh, linking the controllers operator interface and we have annunciation system because when we see a process has uh, more parameters uh, some process uh, in a large scale plant the number of parameters may be close to 3000 4000 or even 8000 so in that case it is not possible for any operator to continuously follow those process parameter there comes the role of annunciation it alerts the operator in case of any deviation then the emergency control. Emergency control helps in handling the process when abnormal, unforeseen situation related to the failure of the controllers or the automated controllers. So there comes the role of the emergency control system. Then logs and reports, they help in knowing the or following the process condition, the product, the raw material used, all these details are generated. So when we speak of automation, the automation has to imbibe all these features, the control system, the automated system should have all these basic minimum features. Then only we can call that system as a control system or a fully automated system. It is not only about automating the repeated uh, event, it is also about imbibing this part. Depending upon the purpose, we can classify this uh, process automation system or the process control system as a basic process control system where the main idea, the intention and the design of the components used and the logic developed is purely focused on handling the process alone. This is called basic process control. Then the data acquisition system or a monitoring system where the purpose, say for example, uh, uh, we want to know the water management. There, uh, not much of process is there, but uh, it is an automated system in uh, uh, starting the pump or opening or closing the valves and transporting and knowing the uh, quantity of water consumed. So some uh, events are involved. And here the main role is about monitoring, acquiring the data. So the system designed for this purpose is called a monitoring system. Then safety. We can also have an automated system, an automation system to handle emergencies. That system is called safety instrumented system uh, because why we need to have uh, so many different type of system is we want to ensure any process we want to operate, we want to first ensure that it is uh, safe to operate. So in the automated system, generally by design, uh, layers of protections are involved 
to ensure in case of failure of one layer at the next layer how we saw the layers of automations are there similarly layers of protections will be there to ensure in case of any situation and failure of the automated sequence it should not harm the process equipment and the personal working every one of us very well know in case of failure of the process conditions in especially in major industries or industries which are handling hazardous chemicals what will be the consequences so that's why in the recent times most of the industries are going for a dedicated safety instrumented system this uh, system has its own uh, way of logic uh, designing which is different from the basic process control system and it also use the instruments of very high reliability we call it as a safety integrity level seal so using this uh, uh the logic uh, for uh, purpose of safety and this uh, instrument which meets that uh, seal standard safety integrity level we form the safety instrumented function to minimize the hazard happening out of this and the level of intelligence how we distribute the level of intelligence intelligence in a process control system or any automated system we call it as depending upon that either the intelligence or the decision making ability can be Uh, or the execution of the automation events can be concentrated over uh, one entity or a one single controller we call that type of system as a centralized system generally batch process have this type of uh, system and when the number of input outputs are minimum the process parameters are minimum then also we go for the centralized control system or centralized automated system decentralized decentralized means parallelly at so many places similar type of activities will be carried out so to handle that kind of uh, or to automate that kind of process we go for decentralizing the intelligence means that particular entity will take care of what is the process which is under its control it is least bother about what is happening in the parallel process so this kind of uh, automated system or the process automation system we call it as decentralized in case of uh, i i worked in uh, aluminum sector also there in the smelter unit in the electrolysis part there will be so many parts will be there electrolysis cell will be there where the aluminum aluminum is uh, generated so each uh, electrolysis cell comes with one dedicated microprocessor based controller it has some program to manage the process related uh, activities or events of that particular cell alone and apart from that it shares information with some central computer that's all like this we will be having say for example in one uh, part line in which i worked uh, there i used to be around 240 controllers like that many number of lines will be parallelly occurring so this is called decentralized then comes the distributed distributed means in the decentralized case between one automation controller and the another automation controller there is mostly no exchange of information and the process are also not interlinked but in case of distributed intelligence the controllers again the intelligence is distributed or there may be more than num, uh, one controller and here the data sharing will happen between among the controller and the process is also to an extent linked from one controller or one uh, process to another process so that type of uh, automation we call it as distributed then comes the hierarchical where we will be having a master uh, or a, it is a sort of uh, centralized uh, control below which decentralized controllers are there it is a like master slave protocol then comes the supervisory where mostly the purpose is of monitoring and with less control so that type of uh, system which is designed for that type of process we call it as supervisory so this is all about uh, different type of uh, the classification of the automation system or process uh, automation system depending upon the purpose and the intelligence then based on the control it can be a, a sequence execution of events one after another one after another one after another once it is executed till the completion of the process it is held like as it is then started again 
So that type of process is called as sequential process. Why we are seeing all these things? Because while selecting the automation system, automation controller, this type of uh, the process and the controllers has to go hand in hand. Then the process may be continuous. Already we saw regarding the batch and uh, continuous. Uh, continuous is, uh, we can say thermal power generation as the example, clear example for uh, continuous uh, process in which the controller should be handling the continuous execution. It means, say for example, uh, maintaining the speed of the turbine, maintaining the uh, drum level, water level in, the, in a drum. So this uh, particular loop, it works as a loop. In a process where so many number of loops are there, we should go for a continuous uh, controllers, controllers which can handle the continuous operation. Then numerical control. Generally in uh, lathe machines, we go for this uh, uh, CNC machines, computer numeric control based uh, controllers. We can also classify based on the controller action. Uh, most of you are aware of this. That is the controller can uh, automate or uh, handle the process event either by on off method or using the proportional integral derivative actions or uh, the way the loop is designed, the control loop is designed with feedback or with the feed forward action, cascade split range adaptive like that. So many different methods are there. This is all basic about uh, the various uh, automation systems, process control systems. Uh, now, so far, we saw about various types, but we are yet to see what the controller is. Again, depending upon the type of process, number of input output involved, the controller selection will vary. And the logic, amount of logic involved in executing the process, in getting the final product, the controller selection will vary. Either the controller can be a microprocessor, the controller can be either programmable logic controller, which is specialized in executing the sequential operation, or a programmable automation controller, which is an uh, upgraded form of this PLC, it can be a, the controller can be a microcontroller. It can, the controller can be a PC. Even the soft controllers are there in which uh, the from the signal modules the PC acquires the information and uh, soft controllers run and execute the code and give the output to the mo modules for managing the process equipments. So that PCs all are also used as controllers. Then we have embedded system in which. Uh, uh, limited input outputs are involved and the task is repetitive in nature and the program is almost predefined with the minimum uh, modifications. So that type of system, we call it as embedded systems. So again, depending upon the process, it is used there. Mostly for machinery related automation, this embedded microcontroller microprocessors are used. Electronic modules in older days, electronic modules were also used for uh, automating uh, we call it as analog controls. Nowadays, uh, most of the industries uh, had shifted towards the digital control using the different uh, controllers, which we saw earlier. Again, there are programmable relays are also there, programmable relays. Using that also, we can automate. Again, this automation is all about the size of the process parameter means quantity quantity of the process parameters and the amount of logic involved depending upon that we have to select the automation controller in handling the system or process which is involved in a remote location we go for the remote terminal unit which comes with the inbuilt characteristics for transmission or communicating with the remote SCADA system or a remote uh, supervisory control, or a remote controller. Next, let us see what is a distributed control system. Already I saw, uh, we discussed that uh, different type of uh, control systems, different type of uh, automation controllers, and we saw the classification and the different type of process. Now let us get into the 
most widely used automation system or a process control uh, process automation control system especially deployed for large size plants when we say the distribution here the distribution can be functional means area wise distribution physical physically more number of uh, automation controllers process controllers may be involved and geographical distribution the controllers may be located at different locations so it is semi autonomous small sets of subsystems which uh, handles the process the continuous process or even batch process uh, part by part and work in a coordinated way that system we call it as a distributed control system as the name indicate the controller is control is or the controller action is distributed over different nodes in achieving a common goal that is distributed control system the backbone of this distributed control system is the interconnected high speed communication bus again it uses what we saw the earlier layers of automation it uses the level 1 um, sensors and actuators for uh, executing the automation the process automation the data acquisition it uses the data acquisition modules for getting information from the or uh, signal modules for getting information from the field sensors it has the logics developed depending upon the process or the process parameters design parameters given by the process engineer it has the control logics then data presentation facility for uh, mimicking or showing the process to the operators or the engineers in coordinating the process so the data presentation system will be there then process supervision facility maybe at the uh, management information level then reporting in uh, information already we saw about the annotation system logs and report apart from that uh, performance calculation will be there in any process if you see the process will happen but uh, over that we want to know what had happened we want to follow the history we want to analyze the uh, process conditions for that we need to store the data for that any control system comes with this historical storage and retrieval ability so whatever the data acquired by the controller already we saw controller has the pre programmed uh, execution code but uh, the data storing facility will not be there in the controller for that we have a dedicated uh, support system we call it as historian or historical storage and retrieval system then performance calculation systems these are the if we say dcs these are the basic uh, features uh, which a dcs system should have and uh, it should be capable of integrating all the process events or the process parts or the sub process and the control strategies envisaged in each and every controller and the overall control structure whatever the entities we saw the um, controllers uh, interfaces uh, historians historical storage systems supervisory systems all these things in integrating all these things uh, so then only we can call that particular uh, system as a uh, control system or a fully or a automated system so it has to ensure the control functions envisage and the uh, integration of the process control strategies and the entities next let us see the architecture already we saw that uh, the signals are uh, received that is the process parameter is known from the field instrument then it is uh, fed to the signal conditioning modules which converts this the signals received from the uh, sensors to a digital form mostly nowadays then through some networking equipment it is transferred and this we call it as one part of a 
or one distribute uh, one uh, intelligent node of a dcs a distributed architecture or we can call it as a subsystem of dcs you can see that so many uh, some modules are linked together and they are connected to one automation controller so it takes care of that particular part of the process when we say a centralized system we can say suppose the process ends here this is the only process available then uh, we can call this one as a centralized controller like this depending upon the industry depending upon the process depending upon the number of uh, process parameter involved depending upon the volume the number of distribution will increase it may vary from 2 to up to 65 2 to up to 65 this is we call it as distributed control system then to ensure reliability of the system when we say automation it should be reliable to ensure reliability we need to have redundant or backup system we call it as redundant system so in case of failure of the main uh, system that main uh, intelligent node the standby intelligent node takes the control over in a bumpless way without a hassle free way without any disturbance to the process very fastly then already we saw operational control center we have engineering station where we can uh, follow the health of the each indi individual intelligent nodes are the each individual controllers its communication capabilities its healthiness the amount of uh, loading over the network network switches healthiness and um, in case of a need to change already we saw about the flexible automation in case of need to change the process logics we can do it through the this engineering station it consists of the codes uh, and the, uh, the code the language used on the programming structure it varies from supplier to supplier then comes the networking already we saw that the networking is the backbone of this uh, any process automation system and uh, it is very much uh, important for the distributed control system again we follow the redundancy here also at every level then for uh, this is all about uh, the uh, handling of the process now comes the next level of automation means carrying the information to the production scheduling level that there comes the role of the management information system and in case of uh, in the recent trends of uh, exporting data for remote monitoring the what the operation control center which we are uh, you are seeing is uh, mostly located near to the process area nowadays because of uh, the growth of the technology because of uh, companies going for uh, their uh, process um, plant at various locations geographically distributed at various locations and the necessity for uh, having the expert monitoring over the process uh, most of the industries are going for remote monitoring facility so there comes the role of this uh, opc servers uh this uh, open platform communication system earlier it was object linking and embedding for process control this helps in uh, transferring the data from the uh, process controllers to the uh, windows based uh, operating systems when we say so many entities are uh, involved we also saw the when we saw the features of uh, the dcs we discussed that um, uh integration of all these entities is also an important feature of the dcs so when so many uh, intelligent uh, nodes so many intelligent controllers uh, operator or stations engineering stations historians networking components uh, management information uh, uh, systems are involved they need to work in a coherent uh, in a synchronized way there comes the role of the master clock gps clock so nowadays uh, the gps clock uh, is an inherent or uh, uh, unavoidable part of any dcs architecture this is all about the overview of the, of the dcs architecture now let us move to the next part the challenges challenges already uh, we discussed the integration of uh, the various entities is a major challenge uh, nowadays 
because of the industry revolutions or the technological growth the so called industry 4.0 is uh, bringing new uh, possibilities new possibilities at uh, various cost level you can see the growth of uh, iot especially it can fetch uh, information the sensors are available even for 100 rupees which can directly which has the capability to directly uh, upload the data through cloud uh, to the internet so that has uh, data and no time with no cost uh, or minimal cost it is available for monitoring from anywhere but our our dcs are uh, designed to handle or access or uh, acquire or imbibe the this technological growth next for uh, monitoring of the process from remote location or actually to say with the expert monitoring and uh, the need or the need to have skilled labor or expert at uh, particular location or to go for a collaborative monitoring collaborative monitoring means the oem has more expertise over the user oem means equipment supplier has more expertise with the, the user who is going to use that process equipment or the process control system so in that case uh, we need to have a remote facility or collaborative or assistance from the uh, oems in case of uh, say wind turbine generators um, the supplier may be from italy that uh, in india there may be one dealer he will be procuring equipment from the italy based organization and he will be distributing throughout india so the company can may have one uh, monitoring facility in india then monitoring facility at italy so they continuously acquire so in this case the process control system need to have facility to share the information share the process control uh, data share the process status to remote locations also then digital technologies in industrial space what we call it as the otit convergence the operation technology so far what we saw the process automation is about operation technology then comes the it technology the it technology is very fastly uh, progressing they are updating very frequently but when you see the turn back towards the operation technology we cannot uh, update that uh, often minimum it will take 10 years for any industry to upgrade from one type of automation system to another type of automation system some companies they continue to operate even more than 20 years so the digital technologies which are uh, available uh, for any office even an office that digital uh, that uh, technology it is very difficult to uh, bring it to the industrial very fastly because industries are not ready to cope up with the fast changes happening next varied communication protocols already we saw integrate uh, integration of uh, various entities is uh, one of the main feature of the dcs so there are uh, communication protocols each and every vendor yeah, they are coming out with uh, their proprietary protocol so we should go for vendor free communication so that any make any make sensor or any make controller should be capable should be able to communicate with the the any other uh, make uh, system so that it will improve the scalability because one of the main feature of a dcs is its scalability that's how the dcs is uh, different from the remaining type of control system so here uh, but uh, now at present systems we can go for uh, same make and model controllers only and the facility for plug and play type of sensors are also now available but the process control networks are yet to accommodate this type of technological growth less data exchange among controllers for reliability purpose all the dcs vendors go for exchange a minimum amount of data transfer between the controllers and if at all there they are again the hardware not through the bus unless until we go for uh, more amount of data exchange between controller we cannot go for uh, the remote uh, type of monitoring then conservative data rules because uh, whatever the data acquired from the existing systems are stored but uh, the when we come to the analytics part it is very very when we come to the analytics part it is very very less the analytics part of the existing dcs is really lagging
Next, uh, coming to the controller, architecture point of view, remote I.O. enclosures are uh, available now. They help uh, in uh, reducing the execution time of any DCS, uh, any automation project. Electronic marshalling. Electronic marshalling means uh, now what happens, the signal, any signal which comes from already we saw the DCS are uh, for, especially for large size plants. When we speak of large size, the geographically, geographically it is more. So the signal has to be acquired from a different location. In that case, uh, at present, the hardwired uh, concept is followed. So what it does, it, uh, when we go for execution of greenfield project or even a brownfield project or a, a, a renovation project, it takes a lot of time to complete this marshalling. If we go for if, uh, the available electronic marshalling, already available, if it is um, uh, imbibed in the DCS, we can reduce the uh, execution time of any project and modernization can be carried out very fastly. Again, um, with the uh, present uh, architecture, the networking wireless for accommodating the wireless technology is very, very minimum and it is restricted. When you open this uh, facility, the DCS, the process automation systems can imbibe the latest uh, digital um, technological growth. Next to virtualization. Virtualization means at present, if, if you see, the any operator or station or engineering station or your clients are machine dependent. It means I have to buy a particular make or a particular operating system model uh, PCs only. If we go for virtualization, what the advantage is, it becomes machine independent. Machine independent. So that we need not upgrade the system every five years, which is the common practice uh, with the uh, IT technologies. So the, if we go for more virtualization, the additional costs, cost incurred over the upgradation can be minimized. Visualization. Visualization is the place where the DCS actually lacks because now the most of the DCS are following the traditional mimic based visualization only. The technology had improved. Uh, we will see at the next slide what are all the requirements in the recent optimization. Coming to the optimization, we saw about uh, process automation. Process automation help you in achieving the final product, but optimization is what it helps you in getting the better output, better efficient uh, product to manage the resources effectively, to manage the equipment effectively. There comes the role of the optimization. Skid mounted system to minimize the downtime. And uh, nowadays, most of the companies are going for skid mounted system. Skid mounted system means the process equipment along with the automation controller comes as a single entity. So they buy it as a set from the supplier and integrate to the main process controller. It helps in reducing the downtime. If the DCS uh, has a open protocol or a better uh, communication facility, so that the skid mounted uh, systems can be imbibed very fastly. Next, uh, growth. When we say growth, we saw different layers of automation. The growth can be vertical and horizontal. So vertical means, suppose my company is level two automated, that is the controller level automation is there, supervisory automation is there. I want to go one level up. I want to go one level down. One level down in the sense, whatever the technology is available presently at every level, the system should be capable of imbibing the technology. That is called a growth. If you see the now IoT technology is available at the level one. The sensors are available even for 100 rupees or 200 rupees at a very low cost and they are comes with the capability of uploading the data to the cloud. But if you see that uh, the integration of that technology to DCS is lagging. Horizontal integration means the DCS, the controllers, which are uh, comes with the vendor specific controllers, don't have that much capability directly to interact with uh, other MEC controllers, maybe PLCs. If you say, see in case of PLC, PLCs are capable of communicating with the variable frequency drive, other MEC uh, softwares. But if you see DCS controllers, they are not uh, that much uh, capable in horizontal integration. So this is the area which you need uh, to grow and it is growing in that direction. Distributed intelligence. Now the intelligence is more uh, uh, concentrated on the controller level. So the distributed intelligence means at the software level, at the actuator level, at the sensor level, the intelligence has to be 
improved and uh, so this helps in uh, effective execution of the process next predictive predictive maintenance this is a place at a higher level uh, and automation level at present when we see so much of data is collected uh, in the dcs but not even 2% of data is used for predictive analysis that is a pity about the existing uh, dcs systems nowadays uh, with the recent technologies this comes as a part of the dcs the predictive analysis comes as the part of the dcs so this is a trend in which uh, uh, most of the industries are moving this is what we say uh, we discussed that automation layers field level controller level uh, supervisor level enterprises level if the company is uh, the dcs or the any processes automation system should be capable of imbibing the technological growth at the one layer up or one layer down next so far we saw about uh, the process automation system uh, dcs uh, various type of controllers everything so what exactly the industry is moving towards the industry or any sector they are moving in the way of digitalization when we speak of digitalization it is more about handling the data more about presenting the data more about analyzing the data so how let us see first the automation system is the basic part of a, the base for this so that should be in an integrated way suppose in a plant has four five uh, process locations it has to be integrated next for improving the reliability of the process equipment the equipment has to be monitored throughout its life cycle and predictive algorithm should be there for knowing the deviations in the process or for optimization of the process and this uh, every entity is keep on generating that data uh, the existing system is not capable of handling that data in a efficient way so there comes the role of big data where we have hadoop uh, the edge computing all these uh, concepts are there once this data are uploaded to cloud they can be accessed from anywhere see process automation is different this is the next layer layer and the next level this data once uploaded to cloud or once available at a centralized system can be used in any ways what one is for remote monitoring already we saw remote monitoring is useful in case of multiple uh, the process plant located at multiple locations or various locations next for uh, collaborative uh, monitoring then executive dashboard a person the boss or the in charge of the plant should know what is happening in his organization at one level so that this helps this executive dashboard helps in following the process or the expert it helps in following analyzing and alerting the people at the root level to take care of the remedial action then digital plant viewer that imbibes all the technology available all the sensor available this type of uh, digital plant viewer are very much useful in case of uh, walk down survey where you can carry a laptop and uh, monitor the current status of the any equipment in addition to its uh, asset uh, that uh, throughout its life cycle so this helps a lot in knowing the plant status uh, the equipment status plant status condition even from a remote location as if you are present in that we all know the intelligent interactive solutions intelligent interactive solutions which uh, imbibes the available uh, the ar mixed reality augmented reality and virtual reality concept this uh, again helps in uh, solving or predicting the problems from remote locations or uh, in your assisted maintenance activities and nowadays most of the companies are uh, imbibing and the so called digital twins however they now they are limited to some specific equipment and like uh, uh, ge general electric they are coming out they came out with uh, so many digital twins so they are uh, limited to equipment limited to particular process it is yet to uh, come as a whole for the entire industry this is the area where most of the companies are progressing and once uh, this concept is called the digitalization 
So once the company, yeah, the organization, the process imbibes this technology, we can call that plant as a digital plant. So we imbibed all the technologies, we automated our plant. Now, what is the way forward? Way forward is automation is repeated execution with a little bit of intelligence. Autonomous operation is the process is working on its own. The equipment is working on its own with very, very minimum human intervention. So that we call it as autonomous. So the future is going to be automatic execution to autonomous operation. We know semi-automated, there are various levels and uh, depend now uh, various industries are at various levels of this uh, uh, autonomous operation. A small industry, small processes already achieved the autonomous operation without human intervention. But uh, the, in case of large industries, it is not uh, achieved. So they are still at a semi, even the automation is lacking. Uh, in some companies, they achieved uh, fully automated uh, systems. Uh, however, the humans are responsible for safe execution. Uh, they are working at the supervisory level. In the semi-autonomous system, the organize, uh, organization manage the process through remote operation. Remote operation. And uh, most of the part of the process goes unattended. It is happening on its own. And uh, they are self-diagnostic and uh, self-rectification ability. The process or the controllers, the automation is uh, designed in such a way. So they go in an unattended way. We call that system as a semi-autonomous system. An autonomous coordinated way. Autonomous coordinated way means the assets can operate uh, in an autonomous way. However, the synchronization, it uh, cannot happen at, with the present technologies. It cannot happen in a synchronized way. And uh, it may not be optimized also. There it uh, requires some human intervention in analyzing over a period, over a period, maybe in a hourly, maybe on a daily basis, so that uh, the autonomous operation can be executed. Next comes, uh, this is what uh, about autonomous components can operate as a, they cannot, uh, with the present technology, they cannot operate as a system. They can uh, operate as an individual. Next comes uh, autonomous operation. Fully autonomous plant means the integrated operation of multiple systems. That plant, we can call it as an autonomous plant. So autonomous is operation is the next level of the process autom automation. Thank you, friends. Now we are at the end of the session. Now let us get into the questionnaire part. I received a few questions that uh, regarding uh, job opportunities to groom you as a uh, automation engineers, you start having various uh, knowledge about um, the existing um, existing uh, automation technologies, automation controllers, start uh, programming a small, small uh, event. Uh, you can even uh, go for your uh, uh, home automation. Home automation is the best way in uh, learning the automation techniques and the, how the controller behaves, what are the difficulties uh, faced in integrating one sensor to a controller, difficulties in uh, achieving a fail-safe logic. So these things you can learn. Start. Uh, um, you can attend uh, small training programs uh, arranged at, at various uh, organizations uh, regarding PLCs, regarding DCS. The seminars will help you in um, acquiring knowledge and uh, confidence over the, this process automation systems. Coming to the opportunities, uh, leading uh, companies like Siemens, Rockwell, uh, Snyder, Honeywell, uh, Emerson, uh, these are the leading uh, uh, automation companies, GE, they are the leading automation companies. They provide a lot of uh, design and uh, ex project execution uh, job opportunities for the uh, young engineers. 
when we get into the core sector mostly your uh, job role will be of uh, more of maintenance and less of design means uh, you will learn lot about about the uh, automation controllers uh, where uh, you can understand in depth about the automation controllers uh, okay i think we are almost at the end of the session uh, remaining questions uh, i will answer through e email uh with this uh, i think we can close the session sir i think it's a time up sir we can uh, wind up the session sir thank you friends thank you for uh, spending your uh, valuable time one hour in uh, having some uh, sharing some information about uh, process automation and uh, what are all the trends emerging trends in the process automation thank you thank you very much